Hannah, I see. All right, we are recording. Hey, everybody, it's Thursday evening. It's March 14th, and I am Julie Apple Walker, and I get to host you guys for our community, client community Zoom. And we are talking about one of my very favorite topics. It is around transition, and it's something that I'm personally super passionate about. I've been coaching, I think last month it was nine years. I've been an Optavia coach and I've been a personal trainer for gosh, a few years longer than that. So my background is actually in the training world. And I um, connected with Dee about probably 13 years ago. And she told me about Optavia um, at the time I wasn't interested, but when I um, started training my clients, I realized I needed a tool that would help them. And so I'm so grateful for the program, how it um, helped my clients and how it's also helped me personally. And that's one of the things that I'm so passionate about. The plan is helping my clients learn how to transition because you guys probably know how the plan helps us lose weight, but it's honestly probably even harder to learn how to do this for the long term. Um, and so I have a couple of my clients joining us tonight, and they're going to share some tips, and I'm excited to introduce them in, the in a minute. But while we're kicking off in the chat, I'd love to hear where you guys are in your um, journey. If you're just now starting, welcome. This is a perfect time to hear all about long term. If you've already reached your goal, we'd love to hear that. So just put in the chat where you are in your journey. And then I want to start off um, our call tonight with giving you guys a big picture of how the program is designed for the long term. And after being a coach for several years, I've, I, I love it. I just finished my first week. Congrats, Karen. That's awesome. Um, so one of the things that people look at our plan and say, well, this is amazing. I'm, I'm going to lose the weight, but I'm terrified of how I do this long term. And I actually have a few clients that have return back to plan because they didn't follow transition. But I'm proud to say so many of my clients have been able to follow the four week transition and they are still maintaining their healthy weight at their goal weight because they learned how to follow the four week transition. And they learned how to take it from what I described to my clients is going from like baby food to solid food. That's how I equate going from five and one to the long term. So I, um, I teach my clients very specifically, this is how you follow transition. These are the four weeks. And I wanted to just give you guys a high level of what that transition process looks like. And then I'm going to introduce my clients because I want them to share and they will inspire you guys. Um, but if you have your Optavia guide, I would encourage you to go grab it and flip to page 45. If you have the updated Optavia guide, go grab it really fast but I want to go through it with you and just help you understand if you are within a few pounds of your goal weight, I tell my clients, let's get started. Because one of the things that I see often with clients is you get really close to your goal and you're probably what, five pounds away. And everybody tells me, oh, I just want a little bit more, Julie. I just want a little bit more. <laughs> and in that process, they end up backpedaling and then they gain some weight back because they never transitioned and then they fall back into old habits. So I, um, I encourage my clients to go ahead and start transition within a few pounds of their goal so they can start, just keep moving, use the momentum they have and keep moving forward. So um, if you guys have your guide, I look at page 45 and the first week of transition is all, the only difference is that you're adding extra vegetables. So you'll be adding a cup of any kind. So that can be adding in Brussels sprouts, carrots, corn, the ones you've not been eating. You're, you can add those back in. You're just going to add some extra vegetables the first week, but you're basically doing five in one, just adding those veggies. So the first week is pretty simple. The next week is when clients start to get a little fearful and terrified because they're leaving the five in one bubble. <laughs> but I encourage you guys, this is the process that Dr. A created and it's designed with science and it's designed to help your metabolism adjust to eating more calories, to eating more fuel, more of your own food. Um, and we're going to want to follow the process because it's designed to help our bodies adjust to more calories. Um, so the second week you're adding back um, two medium-sized pieces of fruit or a cup of berries or cubed fruit. 
and you're going to actually drop a fueling that week. So instead of having the fueling, you're going to replace it with a serving of fruit and you're going to keep everything else the same. Um, you're just taking out that one fueling and adding in the fruit. The third week of transition, you're adding back some dairy. Um, so you're down to four fuelings. You've got your extra veggies, your fruit, and then you've added in some dairy. So that's how the third week flows. And then by the fourth week, the only um, part that changes is you're dropping a fueling and it's gonna be replaced with a serving of grains. So by the end of week four, you've stair-stepped your calories, which has helped your body adjust. And you've also added back some of the food groups that you haven't been eating while you've been on five and one. So you've added back your starchy vegetables, your fruit, and then your grains. So that's kind of how the four weeks looks. And I can't emphasize to you guys enough to follow the plan for transition, because if you want to be successful long-term, that's how you do it. Um, and then your coach can work with you. And we have tons of resources. You can actually go into the life book and the habits of health book. Dr. A has them, um, uh, element 2.8 in the habits of health book. And then it's elements 14 and 15 in the life book. If you guys want to write that down, what I encourage my clients is to actually start reading that when they're like halfway to their goal so that they feel educated and they can start learning what comes next. Because what Angela is going to share with you guys in a little bit is it's all about the mindset. It's all about being educated and understanding how to make this your lifestyle for the, the long, long haul. So I want to also hit on one other thing, and then I'm going to introduce my clients, but something that we like to call, it's your TEE, -E. it's your total energy expenditure. This gets a little technical, so just hang on. Um, but it's what your calorie intake needs to be. Your coach can help calculate it for you. It's also on the Optavia website under the three and three plan and the sections. Yes, we'll put it in the chat for you in, in, just, a, in just a minute. Um, but it's Habits of Health, in the Habits of Health book, it's 2.8 is the element. And then in the Life book, it's 14 and 15. So both books have awesome sections to help with all, all the details. Um, but your TEE can be calculated on the three and three link on the Optavia page. And there's a calculator. And the whole goal of the TEE is to understand how much you should be eating and what your calorie intake needs to be. Because most people that I talk to, they think 2000 calories or more is probably what I need. But in reality, you probably don't actually need that many calories. Um, so it may be like 1500, it may be 1600. We'll help you calculate that, but that's what you're gonna wanna shoot for. So after you've walked through the four weeks of transition, you're probably eating around 13, 1400 calories. So you may need to just add a couple hundred calories and that's where you're gonna wanna maintain. And that's the three and three plan that Dr. A has created three fuelings and then three small snacks um, or meals. And that's where I encourage my clients to keep eating at least two or three fuelings for a few months just to stabilize instead of dropping all the structure, keep some fuelings and keep eating in that same structure so that you're going to be successful. Otherwise, imagine all of a sudden you have had so much, <laughs> so much of a routine and then you have to do it all yourself. It's a little bit harder. Um, so that's kind of the big picture that I wanted to give you guys. Um, but I would love to introduce Hannah. She is going to tell us um, kind of her journey. And also she um, transferred to me as a, as a client. And I had never met her, but she had done program a few years ago with a different coach. And um, she and I connected in January and I have just loved getting to know her. I love her energy. And I want you guys to hear what she accomplished last time, but also what she didn't do that she wants everybody to know doesn't work and what to do. So Hannah, join Hi. us. We would love to hear your story and just kind of tell us what, what happened last time and what you're looking forward to this time. Um. So I did plan in 2018 for three and a half months and I lost 35 pounds. Um, my, me and a couple of my husband's family members did it all together. So it was, we had a good, I thought we had a good support system. Um, but, um, when I stopped doing it, I didn't transition because I thought, Hey, I've lost all this weight. I'm fine. I'm good to go now. It's, um, great. Well, I was not great. I gained all of my weight back. Um, and now I'm on week seven. 
this time around, I started at the end of January and I am down 23 pounds. So awesome. Oh, and what was one of the very first things you told me when we connected is I, I need to do this the right way is what she yeah, told me. No, for sure. I will it, doing it once and knowing that it works was what brought me back to it. Cause I mean, I tried, I did it in 2018. I lost all that weight. Um, it crept back on. It wasn't like all of a sudden. Um, and then when I found you, I was like, I'm going to do this all the way through. I am going to transition because I didn't think it was a big deal in the beginning or in the last time I did it, but it is 100% a big deal. And I need all of the resources <laughs> to move on with life. Yes. And I, I encouraged Hannah to order the um, life book because she didn't have it and the habits of health book. And that's something that if you guys um, are doing this plan, we were just, Hannah and I were just talking yesterday and she said, I'll be honest, I didn't use the books last time. I never even I opened them. Open them. I'm pretty sure I goodwilled them if I'm being honest. <laughs> and that may be common. And that is why we look at the, our plan so differently, because if you want to make changes for the long term, you have to work on your mindset. You have to work on your habits. It's not going to just come with your Optavia box that shows up every month. While that does amazing results, we know that works, but you, there's so much more for the long term. Um, so Hannah, thank you for sharing. And I'm excited for your progress already um, and just your perspective on the long term. I'm glad to work together on that. So um, the next client that I'm excited to introduce is a dear friend. Angela and I actually went to college together, um, our gosh, 20 years ago down in Florida at Palm Beach Atlantic. We were roommates one summer and we would go to the gym together and we have stayed in touch. And then in, um, the fall of 22, I think we said, right, Angela, she reached out and I'll let her tell her story, but it has been awesome to be able to watch her get where she wants and experience the freedom that I remember when we were in college that she had. Um, and then now a year later, you guys, she is still rocking after done doing transition uh, almost to a, the day she did a year ago, did transition and moved on from five and one, or I think she actually did five, two and two because she was nursing mom, right? So Angela, you take it away and tell us. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. I am happy to be sharing my story with you this evening. I asked Julie to be my coach seven months after my second baby was born. I was tired and mad because I knew what it felt like to be happy and healthy. I had always been happy and healthy. Uh, I felt trapped in my postpartum circumstances. My my weight had only come down a few pounds since I'd had my baby and I was angry. <laughs> I wasn't able to go on walks like I did after my first baby. We barely made it around the block. I needed help and Julie with this program came to my rescue. <laughs> the program helped me with eating more frequently and increasing protein. So the program itself, I found easy for me to get through. I think it was, Julie, I think it was five or seven months and I don't remember. You sent me today and I didn't calculate. Um, so this month, like Julie said, is a full year of transition and maintaining my weight. So I have only fluctuated up or down a couple of pounds. So I've been the same for this whole year. I'm still eating within the first hour in the mornings to wake up my metabolism. Eating every three to four hours, I'm eating high protein, drinking water between meals and moderate exercise throughout the week. I prep my food in the mornings uh, for the day. So when I get the thought of I'm hungry, what should I eat? I already have the answer. And it literally happened to me at lunch today. Like I was up early, which doesn't happen often. And I walked to the fridge like, man, I'm hungry. And I saw exactly what I was supposed to have in the fridge. So I have one blender and I use all the blender cups. I make two shakes. One goes right into my coffee in the morning and one goes in the fridge. However, this morning, if I'm up before seven, I make three shakes. One goes into my coffee and two in the fridge. So I have unflavored protein in my coffee. And a few hours later, if I'm awake before seven is another protein drink. Or um, a few hours after that, I would have high protein yogurt with a fruit or a protein bar. And then the few hours later is a protein smoothie with banana and my greens powder. 
and then we end up at dinner, which is a lean and green, you know, give or take. Um, my husband and I cook large meals twice a week. So every night isn't cooking and cleaning up. I'm successful because the program has provided dairy, dietary boundaries. And I've kept these boundaries in place through transition. We as a family have removed sugar from our food and quickly realized that eating sugar was the cause of us craving sugar. We focus on whole foods and organic foods as much as possible. So for you, please remember that adversaries are to be expected. Most people don't understand your change or value your daily dedication to achieve it. So be mindful of your decisions. Be ready to turn down invitations to gatherings or give yourself grace to partake. We didn't go to our annual family reunion this year simply because of the food. We are different and being different is a choice. Don't try to do what you did before the program. The old you isn't compatible with the new you. Your mindset needs to be forward focused, find new places to eat, embrace the new you, get out and enjoy your new healthy way of living and looking good doing it. And also find the fun in exercise. We bought a small trampoline because our HOA will not allow a large trampoline outside. So we have the one inside that is like for 500 pounds. So my kids and I can jump on it together, but we put it in our hall. So we have to jump. We have to literally jump to get where we're going. And it makes us laugh. And sometimes one jump turns into five jumps and it's fun. So please find your fun and have fun moving and see yourself as though you have leveled up, not as game over. Thank you. That's awesome. So proud of you, Angela. That's you guys like that is what has made this so fun for me as a coach and for being able to see friends like Angela knowing that what she learned brought her back to what she knew years ago, but couldn't find and couldn't pull together herself. And then having the structure of the plan just gave her that okay, I can do this. I know how to make this simple. I can, I'm busy as a mom, but I can do this. And then she just kept transforming. And it was so, um, it was so neat to see how she was making it work for her. And then as we transitioned into long-term and talking to Angela and we stayed in touch and I, I even just recently asked her, I said, are you still doing good? Like probably a month or two ago. And she said, I am. And I mean, sent a picture and just glowing. And so you guys, I just want you to hear her heart and be able to see the freedom that comes when you, when you choose to follow the next step after five and one or five, like for Angela, five, two and two or four and two, whatever plan you actually do, there is a next step. You don't want to get stuck in what we call five in one jail, because to me that what I tell my clients is that's just continuing, continuing the yo-yo cycle. Um, you want to be able to move on and you can learn how to do this. And it just takes, like Angela said, it takes make, making mindset changes and keeping the, keeping the structure in place. Like I've, since my twenties, y'all, I have eaten the same way. And I tell people it's all about balance. I have not changed anything since my twenties. I learned as a kid to eat frequently, eat breakfast, drink water, be active, and I, I am so grateful that I learned that as a kid. I realized that's kind of unusual in our culture to learn how to eat healthy and do it from a young age. Um, but I, I did, I was fortunate and I've just continued to keep that in place all through my adult years. And it served me and I can lean back on that. When I had my daughter and was up of like 20 pounds, I lost the weight pretty quickly because I just went back to the structure of eating six times a day and drinking water and getting back into my activity. So it's all the basics. But I just encourage you guys to make the mindset change of what's required for the long term and how how do I need to do this? What do I need to do to prepare? How do I educate myself while I'm on five and one or four and two so that I can do this for the long term? Um, so thank you both for sharing. And what we want to do probably for the next little bit is open it up for Q&A because I see all your beautiful faces and I know there's probably people on here that have a lot of questions. This is typically a topic, there can be a lot of questions and it gets a little technical, um, but I love this stuff and I love reading in-body reports and I can answer lots of questions and Angela and I'm sure Hannah would be happy to answer questions too. So if you guys have anything, feel free to come off mute 
and just shout out your questions or put it in the chat, what you guys are wondering, or if you want to hear a little bit more about routines, um, myself or Angela, or if you want to share a tip, even we would love to hear that. Um, some of our coaches that have been doing this and maintaining for years. So if, I'm going to quiet for a second and you guys feel free to unmute. If I don't see a hand, some of you others on here can keep your eyes out. Does everybody know how to get to the um, the Optavia website and see the TEE calculator? Because that's one thing I would encourage you to know and calculate before you get to your um, goal is calculate where your calorie intake needs to be. Because once you know how many calories you need to eat, it will help you as you move through the week by weeks of transition, you'll know, okay, on a regular basis, I need to be eating 1500 calories or 1700 calories. Um, so that's a huge recommendation after this call. If you want a little, a little assignment is go to the Optavia website and look at the TEE calculator. It's under programs under the three and three um, and get with your coach about how to calculate that and what it looks like, because that will, that will give you a lot of freedom to understand what calorie intake you need to be. So I see one of the questions is, one of the things I've loved about the fuelings is the grab and go nature. I've loved the bars specifically. Do you have any recommendations for small snacks or meals? That's a great question. Um, what I encourage my clients to keep handy are things like two good yogurts. Um, those are the small size that you can like throw in a refrigerated bag. Like if you're on the run during the day, take some cheese sticks, take some two good yogurts, or even the um, Good Culture is one of my favorite brands of cottage cheese. Things like that that you can take on the run if you're traveling. Um, packs of tuna are a great thing to pack. Um, trying to think some of the others. Quest chips are great to travel or to keep handy once you've, even on plan, they can be counted as protein. But once you've transitioned, those are an awesome way to keep in getting, I, I still order Quest chips regularly and eat them often because they're a source of high protein. Um, so those are some ideas. If you guys, anybody else, feel free to pop in the chat what you do as quick grabbing goes, because I'm sure there's lots of other coaches on here with other ideas. Um, one of the comments is my Optivate guy just came today. Haven't read it yet. I've changed it up between fish and chicken. No, definitely get some variety. So that's what I would encourage. Um, even after the after you've reached your goal, I still, my family, we still we still make lean and greens. And Angela even said that too. We still make lean and green meals. I we have our favorite recipes and we still make them um, because they're just great portioned out macro meals that are going to give you the protein you need. Families love them. So I would continue to eat um, lean and greens that you guys like. Where do you get the recipes? So there's a couple different ways. And if you're um, a new client or if you don't even know this, Optavia has an amazing app that's been updated. And it is one of my favorite places to find recipes now. You can just go into the Optavia, like find it on the app store, put your username and um, same thing you use for the Optavia.com website. And you can actually at the bottom, it'll show lean and greens. You can search by protein type. Um, it will tell you all the different ideas. So somebody's mentioned don't eating the same thing, get some variety. So like personally, I'm vegetarian, so I can look and filter all the recipes for our vegetarian options. You could look for chicken. So get, get, uh, have fun with this. Like Angela said, have fun and make, make variety because otherwise it will get boring and you will burn out. So let's see, Beth, I see you raised your hand. Go for it. Oh, you're still in. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm on my phone. I'm not good at it. Um, so I've been um, in maintenance for almost eight years. Um, I have a question. I know um, I'm good with breakfast and my lean and green for dinner. And I have my three feelings throughout the day. I'm right now for some reason struggling what to have for lunch. I love sandwiches, but I try not to eat too much bread. So I would just be curious you know, what would, what would you recommend for a good, I don't want to fix a lean and green meal for lunch and dinner. So. Yeah. 
That's a good question. And if I'm being honest, lunch is my least favorite meal to deal with because Mine I'm, too. <laughs> I'm usually busy and I just don't want to take the time to make anything. Um, so a lot of times I will have my two good yogurt at lunch instead of like an afternoon snack or morning, I save my two good yogurt. And I like literally today I had a strawberry two good yogurt and a cheese stick was my lunch because I was busy. I had just picked up my daughter. I'm trying to run. I'm like, grab it and eat it. Um, but the other thing I love to keep in the fridge and I buy them, I haven't seen them lately at Costco, but sometimes they have them. They're the cauliflower thins. And so I will buy those and keep those in my fridge because you can slap those together and make a quick sandwich. And it's like a two slices of bread, um, but it's giving you the protein and the vegetables right in those thins. So cauliflower thins are a helpful thing to keep around too. Perfect. Hopefully, Thank you. I appreciate it. A couple ideas. Great question. And Trader Joe's, yes, Trader Joe's has them. And those are awesome too. If you can't find them um, at your grocery store at Costco, Trader Joe's is great. Uh, go ahead, Dominique. Hey, Julie. Good Hi. Evening. Great call, Julie. Very important transition, right? So, um, well, I've I've kept my weight off for 17 years. So give or take three or Ooh. five. So, you know, but then we go back a little bit. And I always tell my clients, when they are five pounds up, go through your checklist of the macro habits. Are you still eating every three hours? A lot of times they're like, ah, you know, are you still drinking your water? Are you still exercising 30 minutes, five days a week? And then you get your sleep. How's your mindset, your stress? So, and just going through that checklist, a lot of times that will be like, oh yes, I need to do this again, you know, because our old habits come back up again sometimes. And, uh, as far as lunch goes, what I really enjoy for lunch is just making a salad and Ezekiel bread. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Ezekiel bread. I have one slice. It's very filling. It's sprouted grains. You have to keep it in the fridge and uh, and then have some protein with it, either a poached egg or, uh, you know, some smoked salmon or something like that. But uh, of course, you have to be at home for that. If you're a busy mom, that doesn't always work. But you can even make it in advance, right? And just take it with you or have the, the jar and make the jar with the salad, you know. So uh, we have that a lot of times on the on the website as well. That's really fun. Put some garbanzo beans in there or something like that for, for high protein. I love that for lunch and it really fills me up. And um, so... Um, it's it's very possible and it's 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 such a great program another thing I think is you know I really choose low glycemic that's kind of just pumped into me you know so and uh, if I eat fruit I stay away from bananas things like that I will choose berries to have also more antioxidants but really stick to the low glycemic most of the time so. can you tell us in a really really short sentence what that means for the newbies Sure. Uh, low glycemic, it actually, it is an element 14, I believe as well, uh, in Dr. A's book. And so it's everything, uh, any, any fruit or any food, actually, uh, when you consume it, it will raise your blood sugar. Okay. So no matter which, what it is, but some raise your blood sugar more than others. And so you can actually look up, for instance, watermelon, you can Google it real quick, GI um, glycemic index for okay. watermelon. And you want to look for a glycemic index that's under 50, okay, for most of the time. And again, it's like 80-20, right, or 90-10. So 80% of the time, I want to really have a low glycemic index food item, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, and um, so also something you might want to know is that if you have something that's a little bit higher glycemic index, if you if you combine it with protein, it cuts the glycemic index down a little bit, you know? So, uh, but try to stay with that most of the time, you know, and I happen to love berries more than I like bananas anyway. So, but, uh, you know, a uh, sweet potato has a lower glycemic index than a white potato. So mm -hmm. just kind of, it's a form of education and, um, and um, yeah, it's really easy to learn and it's really quick to look up as well to Google it. So that's my, those are awesome. Awesome tips. Thank you, Dominique. That's so helpful. And hearing what everybody, you know, what everybody remembers. And I love your reminder about going back to the basics because that's so often what I hear other, my clients say, oh yeah, I stopped eating six times a day. 
now I only eat three and, oh, I started skipping breakfast again. I just am in too much of a rush. You know, like those basics are so important. Um, so I hope this has been helpful for you guys. This, you can tell I love this topic. So if I, if you guys have other questions, feel free to reach out to me um, on social media or if anywhere, I'm happy to help on our Eat, Live and Be Healthy page. Um, but we're so glad you joined us tonight and we will see you guys for this next month. So talk to you guys and see you later. Great job. <laughs>